Hey everybody, what's up? This is Rich. In this video, I'm going to go old school on you and show you some command prompt stuff. Now, even though 99.999999% of what you do in Windows is done with the mouse in the GUI environment, that being GUI, graphical user interface, there are times when you will need to go to the command prompt, such as running a command called ipconfig, which can't be run from the GUI environment, but it can be run from the command prompt. Getting to the command prompt is one thing. First, you can either go to start and then all programs, accessories, and then command prompt, or by clicking start and then run and typing CMD and clicking OK. Or if you want to make it really easy, you can do it this way that I'm about to show you. This is the desktop. Right click on an empty area of the desktop. Left click new. Left click shortcut. Now, before continuing, this applies to Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7. It doesn't matter what you're using. It all works the same. Type CMD and then click Next and then click Finish. And what this is, CMD is the command prompt. And if you double click it, you've got one, just like that. The first thing that you'll want to do is probably change around the way it looks a little bit, maybe change the font and the size. Um, what I do is I keep it as a uh, silver on black which is what it is, or gray on black, however you want to say it. Uh, you can change the way it looks by left-clicking the small little icon at the top left of the window, going to Properties, and then going to Font. There's um, two types of fonts. There's true type fonts and raster fonts. I stay with raster fonts just because, first of all, I don't see a need for an anti-aliased font in a, a command prompt window. And secondly, to my eyes, it's easier to read. So I'll change that over to 12 by 16. And if you went to the Layout tab, you can uh, change it so it, has, it can be wider or taller. You can mess around with that if you want to. Um, and then in the Color section, if I wanted to have, say, a white background with black text, I could totally do it, or any one of these colors. But I like having it as a black, ground, a black background with gray text or silver text, and hit OK. So here we go. That's a size that I like, especially for those of you with higher resolution monitors. You're probably going to want to change the font to something bigger. Anyway, all right. So, how do we how do we work with this thing? Okay, um, IP config. You've probably seen it before. You type IP config slash all, and it gives you a whole bunch of IP information. But you know how to do that. But let's just say you wanted to copy this somewhere. How do you copy it to a forum or to an email or something like that? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You can either copy directly from the window into somewhere else, or you can save it, the output to a text file, and then uh, use it that way. I'll show you both ways. I'm using my mouse to scroll up with my mouse wheel. And uh, what I can do is right click anywhere in the window and then left click mark. Now what this does, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a blinking cursor at the top left of the window. Now I can use this cursor in one of two ways. I can either take my mouse, left click somewhere and drag. See that big white box? That's what it would copy. I can do it this way and it, I can go at the bottom of the window and go through the buffer and do it this way. I find this to be not exactly the easiest way to do it. It's kind of difficult. The second way is to use your keyboard to do it, which is a whole lot easier because you have a whole lot more control. So I'll press escape, that kills it. And then what I'll do is right click and left click mark. Again, you see that blinking cursor. So what I'm going to do this time is use the arrow keys on my keyboard and go down to the line right here where it says Windows IP configuration. To select it, what I'm going to do is left, excuse me, hold the left shift key. You can use the left or the right, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna hold the left like that. Now, while holding shift, um, I'm going to use my right arrow key to go all the way to the right until it ends. And then I'm going, while still holding shift, mind you, I'm going to press down. And down, 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 down. There's the end. And I'm now I'm tapping with my up arrow to get to the point where it's at the end of where I want to copy. And then, because uh, I don't want to copy the prompt afterwards. And then when I'm satisfied with what I have copied here, I press enter. Now what did this do? I just copied it to the clipboard. 
If you had a web browser open on a forum post, you could paste it at this point. I'm going to use Notepad to show this example. I'm going to minimize this. Launch Notepad. And then click Edit and then Paste. That's everything that was just that I just copied from that window, from the command prompt window into here. And then what I can do is just take this and I can uh, copy pieces of it, uh, do whatever I want, which is great. So don't I'm gonna do don't save and bring my window back up. There we go. Clear the window. With, by the way, the clear the window with CLS that just means I think that means clear local screen. If you're using a Linux environment, the, the uh, command is actually clear, C-L-E-A-R, but in Windows it's C-L-S. Anyway, all right, so let's just say I wanted to do it the second way, which is to copy, uh, excuse me, to write the output to a text file. The way to do this is using a very, very, very old school DOS way of doing this, but it does work. Let me just check something real quick. Okay, I didn't create that directory yet. Um, the first thing to do is you're going to need to create a directory and then switch to that directory and then write the file to the directory. So it's a three-step process. So we're going to create the directory first. It is most likely true that your operating system host drive is drive C. So what I'm going to do is make a directory in the root of C called IP. This is done with the make directory command, which is mkdir, or if you want something even shorter, md it does the same thing. But I like using mkdir, so uh, I don't know why I just do. So mkdir c colon backslash ip. What this means is make a directory ip in the root of drive c. Press enter. It appears to have done nothing, but you actually did just create a directory. So now we need to change to this directory. So that's cd change directory space c colon backslash ip. And there we are. Now we are in the root, sorry, we're not in the root. We are in the directory ip on the host drive c. And now what we're going to do is we are going to output the uh, ip config slash all to a text file. And this is where the really old school stuff comes in. So IP config slash all. You already know that part. Space greater than ip.txt. Now, I'm going to explain to you what this does. IP config slash all would normally show this bunch of information here. But instead of outputting it to the prompt, what I'm going to do is say send to, that's what this greater than thing is for, to the write this to the file ip.txt enter. It appears to have done nothing, but in fact you did write a file. So if I type dir, which is, means directory listing, in the Linux environment it would be ls, but it's dir in Windows. So there is a file called ip.txt. We've just written that. Fantastic. Now I want to see it. The way to see it is I can type notepad. Actually I'll show you the super old school way first. Type <laughs> uh, ip.txt. And it just shows up as like, oh, no, no, that's not what I want to see. I want to see it in Notepad so I can copy and blah, blah, blah. Fine. Notepad, ip.txt. Launches Notepad. It shows up. There's also another way to get to it. So actually several ways, but I'll show you the other way of getting to it. If I launch a Windows Explorer and I go to Drive C and I have a directory called IP because I created it a moment ago and wrote a file to it, double click there is the file and I can double click it and open it it's the exact same thing because it is the exact same file and that is essentially it so that's how to do some basic command line goodness in Windows XP 2007 and Vista and that's it take it easy